Welcome to Cannabis School. I'm your host, Jesse Angelus. And I'm Brandon Elder. And we're here to talk to you about everything pertaining to cannabis, from vape, flower, edibles, strains, and everything in between. Here's something that's really funny, that there are a lot of people believing that this certain event, it's a huge event that happened in American history, in the world history, um, they, they believe that these individuals who had dedicated a lot of time to go into this tube and be shot into space, what? that they never landed on the moon. Oh, the faked Ever. moon landing. Yeah, absolutely. They, they go, oh, it's because of this, and here's these markers and all this other crazy stuff. And it's kind of funny because people have this strong belief. These are the same people that I believe are flat earthers. So um, on that idea, or that we never made it to the moon, well, the f it's because they think the footage is faked or has been replicated that isn't real right but if you look at um if you've ever gone to any of the space centers um walk through the actual original sh shuttles they talk about how it was built what type of materials they used mm -hmm. all of that stuff it makes sense not that we never made it to the moon but that the video content was potentially redone because when right. it enters through the earth's atmosphere and it's going down that first metal tube, it really wasn't that well built. And the radiation, that could very well fry. Because that was when? Back in the 50s, 60s? It was in the in the 1960s. So that could easily fry the tape or whatever that was recorded up there in reentry. So the footage could have been remade in order to have footage shown. But that doesn't mean that... Like, I still think we made to the moon. Well, yeah, I mean, people think about it because of the background. Like, you can't see stars. Like, yeah, you can't see stars in any of those because it's it's only picking up what's closest to you. Like, well, look at all... camcorder back then, do you realize if I take my cell phone outside now, my cell phone, and I'm pointing it at the sky where there's stars... Still grainy. You can't see shit nope. half the time. You ever done that where you try to look at something, you, like, you see it and you record it with your phone and you're like, shit can't see anything it's gone yeah and so, their video cameras back then were nothing compared to my cell phone no and and for those that are listening right now you're probably thinking what in the hell How is this the wrong podcast yeah this is highly reviewed well <laughs> just kidding <laughs> yeah, not yet right but we're gonna go into a uh, a strain called conspiracy theory mm-hmm and yeah. I it's, think we have a little bit different feelings maybe on we this. We totally do. And I mean, it's it's an indica, which... Really? I, mean, I thought it was a sativa-based hybrid. No, it's an indica. Uh, conspiracy or conspiracy... Conspiracy well, theory depends. or conspiracy kush. There's two They're different They're considered ones. the same. Really? Because mm -hmm. when, when I looked at conspiracy kush, the genetic lines were different than conspiracy theory. If conspiracy theory is going to go off of different, it's fairly new. Because uh, I looked at a genealogy. bunch of different websites for Same. that. And I, I keep finding it that it's more, it'll, it can be known as. Because what does it say for the genetics on Kush, on conspiracy Kush? Mm. It might be the same. Genetics is. Obama Kush, Space Queen. See, so that's very different than Conspiracy Theory, which is a sativa based, which is made from G13 Haze and Thai Landry's. So the, here's the thing I've got to tell those people who are naming this shit. Learn about other strains before you start going, because this is completely different from cons Conspiracy Kush, which I agree. Oh, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, very different. And that's why I was like, ours was a sativa based one. And that's why I was confused when you're like, it's an indica. And I'm like, mm, I don't. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack on that one. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, but you know the reason I'm probably just very flippant with it. I didn't like it. I thought it was weak sauce. Um, I thought that it was. I mean, compared to sativas, which I love sativas, yeah. um, it, it just didn't punch. No, it didn't. I was expecting like um, a really straight to the head, like. Uh, yeah, but none of that. What was the alien abduction or what? what? Yeah, alien technology. Alien technology. 
that one was more of what I was expecting mm -hmm. with this one. And it was like, it was good. I enjoyed the experience. It was nice, but it wasn't like punch me up to space, like really strong sativa that I'm like crazy cerebral, really focused or whatever. It was just, it was a nice experience. Yeah, I, I tend to find that sativas in flower form are uh, more, I would say, more recreational for me um, because they, I, I'm doing a certain thing, like if I'm going to the gym or I'm going to go see a movie or I'm going out to a family get-together. Do you have one that's medicinal? Sativa? Well, you're saying sativas are more recreational. Do you no, have a certain focus? sativas when oh, I'm okay. using by flower? Now, when I use in in concentrate, I actually get more focus out of. Now, in a concentrate form, this may be different for me because I find that in concentrates, I have a slightly different effect. Now, it's not as strong sometimes. There are certain sativa strains that make me hella sleepy, which is very strange for many people. They're like. That gets my heart racing. Yeah, but you're from, talking about that last night. But it calms me down. Like, uh, you know, I had uh, a sativa, uh, an indica strain that actually started putting me in a full-blown panic attack again, like Bubba Kush. Yeah. But the thing is, I've had Bubba Kush in flower form, not that feeling. Very strange. Mm -hmm. I've had indicas in flower form, never have put me into a panic mode. So for my endocannabinoid system, and, and this might be true for you right now, listening to this, there are certain strains that are gonna kick in certain emotions and certain biological feelings that you're gonna get. What's the difference that you're feeling? I, I feel differently from flower to concentrate. And with the concentrate, I, I feel that sativas tend to scratch that sativa itch. And what I mean by that is I need a stimulation for my mind in an ADHD constant state. And it helps me to focus, helps me to get clarity. With conspiracy theory, it was okay. It wasn't great. I mean, I'll tell you this. If I had a full, I thought I had a full bag of, of everything I could use, right? All my tubes that I have with pre-ground pre, pre up flour. Mm -hmm. And I found that I had none of them left and I had conspiracy theory. I might consider going on a tea break. Just saying. <laughs> wow. That's some strong yeah. feelings for that. But at the same time, I would be curious if this in a distillate form would be different for me. Well, definitely a distillate. Um, but yeah, a concentrate, I think, would be a different experience to check out and see. I should yeah. go back on that. Not concentrates, distillates. Distillates um, in sativa form actually make me feel a bit different. Uh, concentrates in sativa form. So my favorite, tangy one of my very first sativas that I've ever tried, um, actually is the first sativa that I tried. Uh, concentrates are a slightly different effect, but still better. Mm. Um, but this was weird. In a flower form, I didn't like it as much. What's weird, this one's supposed to have like berry, coffee flavors, earthy flavors. I don't remember coffee flavors for... Because for me, I'm a coffee lover. Is it peppery? No. It's literally chestnut, earthy, coffee, pineapple, berry flavors that are no, in this drink. I didn't pick up any of those. Not even the grind. It's not even pining. You have like limonene, humulene, car... Carefilling? No. Carine and neurolidol. So... Neurolidol sounds like something that they put into... Sounds like a medication or something. Yeah, they put it in the vaccine. Yeah, right? <laughs> What the crap? But I, I don't know. It. I didn't taste coffee at all. I didn't taste berries. And it was fresh flour too. I mean, yeah. When we ground that up, mm -hmm. it's good. It, it, I mean, okay, look, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I would not smoke it again, but if I had my druthers and I'm like going through the store and I'm like, okay, what's the next one I'm going to try? That one would not be on my list. See, for me, I think this is a great church drain where it's a group of people getting together, maybe because this is a very... This is uh, what Brandon calls a church. Yeah, it's cerebral, it's chatty, euphoric. It does have a little bit of relaxation that comes in into it. So for those who are a little bit more anxious and that, 
for me, I feel like this would be a church train. Did it, people was it over, heady at all for you? Yeah, it was straight to my head. See, it didn't really hit me in the head. Oh, it was that, on my shoulders. That's where I hit it first. And then after that, it started to trickle more down into my body mm. um, later on into it. Okay. So. Well, I mean, uh, I, and again, this is not common. Like, And, and that's one of the things I kind of wanted to open up to for, for everybody. It's okay not to like a strain. It's totally oh, yeah. okay. There are, there are strains that even Brandon won't. I mean... Brandon is very eco friendly. He will not. He will not let any I'll of them try go it. Well, but most of the time, if it's something that I don't really care for, so real quick, what is one strain that you don't care for? I mean, the Mac One. Yeah, was oh, terrible. That was but horrible. We've already said if we had it in flour, we'd try it. But that's what it's everybody. A different experience. Yeah, you see all these reviews. But again, I think about reviews, and I think about a lot of like brand new people to cannabis. We'll leave a review and their feeling is going to be completely different from yours. Or oh, mine. yeah. My review for a strain, 90% of the time I feel like might be different than... That's more for your heavier, one heavier of the cannabis other. users. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mine, moderate. Um, yeah, mine's going to be totally different. But when you take somebody brand new... This might be great for them. This that's what a, I was thinking. a really wide terpene range. And it has like... It's not super strong indica no. where it's going to put you down into the couch. Well, it's not even an indica at all. Oh, that's right. Sativa. Sorry. I was thinking about the other one. But My bad. It, it's got like THC, CBD, CBN, CBG, CBC, and THCV all in this one. So as a new user, I feel like that's probably really good because you have this really full, complete range of cannabinoids. Yeah. But like you said, it's not crazy powerful and not really over the top. And I think smoking enough of this would get you to a desired result. Yeah. Um, but the flavors were not, I mean, it was a little bit sharper for me. I didn't enjoy it as much. It wasn't coffee, but it definitely, yeah, I, didn't get coffee I didn't get coffee. I didn't get the berries. I would I just, have loved coffee flavored cannabis. I have never had coffee flavored cannabis. I don't think I've ever had in ones that I've noticed notes of coffee. I would say in flower form, the best one has been key lime pie because it was so, remember how limey it oh, was? Oh my gosh. It was so yeah. good. Right after the grind. Florida orange was like crazy. Yes. Citrusy. Ooh. Um, there is one, I swear I had one. Even tangy, man. Tangy oh, is great. It's got that it, very subtle notes of orange and citrus mm -hmm. and it just, it, it, there was one with cocoa notes that I had years ago out of Colorado. Oh, yeah. I remember you talking about that. I don't remember what it is. I would have to go look at all the list of strains and go, yeah, this is what I... And pick it out through that. Well, and it's like, again, it's going back and forth. You know, when you're in a flower form and we are talking about all of these different tastes and flavors and experiences, people may not have the palate for that. So just know that most of the time when you're smoking plant, and it's burning, you're going to taste burning plant. Um, after time, though, your palate does come a little bit more refined and you can taste those things out of it. Yeah. Um, or if you want better terpene and flavor, you can go to concentrates. And yeah, get devices like Dr. Diver Switch where you can start at a really low temperature range. Or that, uh, what was that one? Uh, the Luca Dragon Egg. Oh. I don't think it has quite the same um, temperature range. No. But it's this cool little looking... Portable piece. Look at the ribs like, and yeah. shit in there, and you have the water, and it probably lights up with color. Pretty cool. L O O K A H. We'll put a link down in the show notes. Yeah, that thing was cool. We saw that over at Deseret Wellness, our friends down there. Yeah. Um, this strain, even though it's sativa based, it's mostly used with like pain, reduction of pain, phantom pains, MS, and stress. And mm. I was like, that's a really weird. And that's very specific. Yeah. Because. Pain wise, Phantom pains? I've, I, I have struggled to find a sativa strain that really helps with pain. Um, if I have such as, uh, I get tennis elbow every once in a while, right? Just That's because. Not beating it so hard. Well, when I'm thinking about your moms, but anyways, <laughs> sorry about that. Love you, mom. <laughs> sorry about that, Brad as well. Uh, but, uh, but, I'm always forgiving because, you know, you could do mob jokes anywhere. But anyway, <laughs> except there sometimes. Uh, but 
uh, pain wise, I don't, I don't gravitate towards it because I've never had a good experience with it. If I have mental anguish, um, such as pain from not even stress, I would say almost sadness, this, this would be a good one uh, on the sativa side. You'd, you'd have to take quite a bit for your moderate to heavy users. Um, for you brand new people, um, this may be a boohoo strain. Um, if you're not feeling great, sativas are a great way to be able to bring up your your mood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To elevate, elevate your mental you. state. And it, I mean, for me, it doesn't make my heart race at all. Um, it just makes me feel super relaxed in the moment. Yeah, this and, one is a concentrated, focused, relaxed, happy. That's right. Those are the like effects from this strain. But I would never. No, not in a million years. Because I, if I have pain, you don't think of a sativa. I go to an indica right away. Yeah. I've had everything from knee pain to ball pain, and oh, if that, you know, what I'm talking shampoo. about like a random, just like kind of feel like you got kicked, dude. After getting snipped, there's random times that it just like you get phantom once pain. in a blue moon. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, um, I mean, they're still there, but you just have this feeling of like, oh my god, my balls. Just, well, I mean, you got to think about men's health too. I mean, it, it's random, especially when you're getting older, it's going to be different. But even when I've had pain there um, and I'm smoking on a sativa, I immediately shift gears and I go to either a indica leaning hybrid or I go to a straight indica. And it, it that has better pain properties. At least that's my experience. So when thinking about conspiracy theory and the pain, I'd be curious on other people who are using this for pain. Would it be for moderate? I mean, if they're talking about MS, MS is a horrible, horrible debilitating disease that just takes you over time. It's a slow drip to de your ultimate demise. That'd be terrible. Yeah. I, I have can't a, even. I have a close friend on that who, who has MS. And I, I mean, he uses alcohol, which is horrible. Oh. I mean, thinking about the poison that you're putting in your body there. And, and I'm not standing grandstanding saying, oh, alcohol's bad. Look, if you like to get down with a little bit of MGD or high life or just a little Bud Light, and if you're rocking really heavy, you're hitting that Paps Blue Ribbon. Oh, or some Natty Light. Ugh. I mean, both are bad. Yeah, but when you think about with cannabis, um, you're looking for that right feel. And that matters more than whatever else is involved in it, whether it's an indica, a sativa, oh fuck, what is wrong with me? Oh my God. You wanna finish that thought? Yeah. Whether it's an indica or a sativa, um, you're, you're always looking for that, that mood stabilizer, that homeostasis that you're trying to be able to achieve. Yeah. Whether it's a physical thing or a mental thing or- Or uh, both. Yeah, or emotional. Both. Yeah. Yeah, emotional. You, you really need to be able to think about what is your intent on using that strain. That's why I I find it kind of funny still where I talk to people and they're like, so what have you been getting high on? I was like, I really don't get high anymore. I, I look for what do I want out of this? And that's all. Like, yeah. I don't think like, I just want to get shit faced. Like when you drink beer, you're just, you drink alcohol, your, your goal is to get shit-faced. You're not like, oh, let's think about the medicinal properties of this and how this is going to be able to help. <laughs> not clear. more. Man, if I have a drink, it's usually like a drink and I'm sipping on a scotch or something because I like the flavor. Sometimes I don't even finish the drink because I'm like, Meh. yeah, I don't like the feeling as much. Uh, it's not my jam anymore, but. I've recently had craving to being able to pick up like a 40. Because, you know, even though that I Edward am... Edward 40 hands? And, well, one. One will work just fine. But no, even it's the game you take two 40s to each hand and you can't take them off until you finish them both. Oh, that's disgusting. So, especially if you got like a St. Ives or... or a, It'd be so bad. Or a Budweiser one. But I, I would get um, MGD in a 40 every blue moon just because just I, like, I like the flavor of beer. Um, however... Even though I've had a craving lately, I won't take it. If I get that craving, I just go have a couple hits, or I go, you know, outside and have uh, either a joint or you know, use my pack mm -hmm. something to be able to get me to a different elevated state. Yeah, because well, um, for those who don't drink anymore, um, who used to, it is nice to have that, like, take the edge off. Yeah, 
it's kind of unwinding at the end of the day. Whatever it is, you put your kids down. Maybe you go that's a hybrid a for toe, me. You know, or after the end of a long day at work, and you're just like, all right, I need a tow. Or mm-hmm. you know, like the quick drops, putting a couple drops oh, into those a are drink, great, and then having a mocktail that has that same effect, mm-hmm. but you can still have that you know habit of your drink that you're so comfortable with. Yeah, I would say like a, a strong ginger beer. I really am into those now, mm. uh, with like some lemon in there, and so then you just put make the quick like drops. a like a yeah, wow, like a virgin mule. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like like a yeah, like a Moscow mule. Mm-hmm. It's it just is tasty, but again, it's it's what what is your intent yeah. with what you're trying to consume? You know, I mean the I had a good talk with Tim Pickett we had just a while ago on on the show and uh we were texting back and forth and he was asking like how our experience was going through the just they're getting our process through kindly MD. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just said, you know, it was awesome because they didn't, even though they were attentive, which is great, they were way more informative and making sure that I was informed on a very mild to low level, not overwhelming, like, you yeah. know, trying to get into the science of everything. Well, and even for mine, where I went in and talked with her, she kind of just got an understanding of where my cannabis use is, yeah. why I've done it, how I've done it, what way more in depth than it was even at our last experience with the last company. And so like loved our experience with empathetic still. That was great. No, it was cool. Kindly MD is a amazing medical experience for those who are new to cannabis, especially in Utah. But kindly MD is actually branching out this year into five other States around the nation as well. So I know they have kindly MD gummies that are out now. We'll have to do a review on them later once Jesse's checked them out. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I get to eat them, but uh, yeah, we'll put a link down below if you guys are interested in checking out Kindly MD. This is a microdose uh, edible. Um, they're, they're little gummies. Yeah, they're little gummies, but there are specific reasons for that. Um, cool Make story. Sure you take half of one because <laughs> half of one is a dose. Yeah, absolutely. Be careful with that. My girlfriend ate the whole thing and realized she was definitely high. Yeah. So, and it's pretty strong. I mean, remember again, you know, whenever you consume cannabis, it turns into 11 hydroxy, and that is going to be well, four yeah. times stronger than THC. Yeah. yeah. THC 11 hydroxy turns into D. 11 hydroxy THC. Yeah, and it's super, it's about four times stronger than just smoking it. So be but very careful. Kindly's aren't just CB or THC. They're no. CBN, CBG, CBD. They're very THCV. focused on the medicinal side. They mm-hmm. don't, they're not tasty. And I thought about it for a while. Remember we talked about that and you're like, this aren't very good. Well, your medicine isn't supposed to taste good. Well, not that they're not very good, but that the flavor has very a, a cannabis-y cannabis-y flavor. But yeah. If it's a medication and you're trying to properly dose it good. I think that 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 taste has to stay. Yeah, that's so much better than having one that's like really appealing and you're like, man, now I just want another one. (laughs) Like wild? (laughs) Yeah, and you're like, man, now I just want to pop like five more in my mouth. Right. And that sounds great for me, but for everyone else listening, they're like, ah, I just want to stick with the dose. Yeah, and you should, especially newer consumers. Um, If you're going into flour, we'll we'll do a follow-up one with this with a 101, you know, transitioning from flour to edible or from from distillates to edibles remember that it is far easier to use the puff than it is to eat because then now you are actually more mentally prepared for what may happen it's a lot stronger but anyways well, the ride I, times much shorter if you're puffing it yes so. you can control it a lot better and plus if you need to come down right away you know grabbing whatever vehicle to to lessen Right, mm-hmm. uh, CBD, peppercorn, lemon juice. Multiple you know what's things. interesting though, um, when you were talking about someone being too high the other day, and you were saying that lemon juice helped them more, way more. But when Emily was too high from that one, I had her try black peppercorns and CBD, and that took longer. And I don't know if the black peppercorns worked as well. It again, it takes the person. My mom yeah. had that same experience, and, and within great ten for minutes. Her. The lemon juice worked. It was really hard for this person because they um, they realized that it heightens your senses. So sounds were louder, lights were brighter, and taste was stronger. 
And so they were like, yep. oh, this is awful. Like this so it's much so lemon dark. juice. Yeah. But thinking about that, it's, you, you got to be careful with it. So it, I low don't know. Low and slow. Yeah. Low, always go low and slow. Uh, but yeah. yeah, to round this off, conspiracy theory, it, it's going to be a 50 50 for me. Um, it's not something that I would highly recommend, but it's definitely something that you should try for newer users. Especially, oh, I yeah. think it's a great idea. See if you can find it in a distillate. Um, concentrate. Yeah, yeah, concentrate or distillate would be, I would be curious on how that would be different. I've never seen it in a distillate, never in, in anywhere. I mean, we could visit a, a dispensary soon and, and even take a look well, at that. Yeah, the problem is most of them even have conspiracy kush. Oh, really? The conspiracy theory is the one that's harder to find. So the sativa-based one, let us know if you guys have it in your area. If you guys have tried yeah. conspiracy theory, uh, let us know. And, yeah. you know, as always, if you can, go to Patreon. Help us donate a dollar. Yeah, just one dollar. Helps us reach more people like you. And we have extra content on there, longer episodes from our interviews. And we're bringing out a lot more. And if you can't donate, go leave us a review. Oh, it you know what? Skip the dollar if you absolutely are like, I cannot give those guys a dollar a month. Cool. Give us a review. Go to Apple. Give us a review. Yeah. Tell other people what you like, what you don't. Help us reach more listeners. Yeah. And as always, thank you guys so much. Catch y'all next week. Take care.